Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kudash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to you, Akim, out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Uh, this lesson is going to be entitled that uh, Yahweh is a master chess player. Okay. Uh, he's a master chess player because the elites are falling right into his hands. You see, they have their agenda. They have their plans. But the, the, the ironic thing about it is that the Heavenly Father's plans line up with their plans to a, to a certain degree, right? And um, one of those main things is that the Heavenly Father wants World War III. And for these elites to do what they want to do and lock down the world and, and, and to bring absolute disorder and chaos, war is the perfect thing they need. But they also understand that the prophecies show them that World War III is, will be the last war and the war to end all wars. Okay? They're trying to set up complete disorder through different means, which, you know, they're, 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 they're going to get to a certain level with it. But to bring it to an absolute, a whole nother level, war is needed. Okay? Because when war comes, that's when complete, uh, the society completely starts to break down. Especially a world war. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to get Daniel's 4 and verse 17. And it reads, Daniel's 4 and 17, it reads, This matter is by the decree of the watchers and a demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest of men. So the Lord has put these Edomites in the power seat, just like he put Nebuchadnezzar in the power seat, just like he put a Pharaoh in the power seat, um, so on and so forth. Okay, And he puts them in the power seat to accomplish his purpose, because his counsel shall stand. Right, they think they're doing their own thing, but the Lord is setting them up, man. The Lord is setting them up uh, for the okie doke, so to speak. This is um. Matter of fact, let me get some real quick. <clears throat> this is Isaiah 55 and verse 11 it says so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please so the Lord's word is going to accomplish what he wants it to accomplish his prophecies and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. This is why everything that we said they're going to do, they, they're doing. Because their plans actually line up with the Heavenly Father's plans to a certain degree. Okay? But at the end of the day, what's going to happen? They're going to end up losing. Alright? There's a, a big L coming to these elites and these Edomites and these other nations. Let's get Habakkuk. Second chapter. All right, this is Habakkuk 2 and verse 3. It says, matter of fact, I'll start at verse 2. <clears throat> it says, and, and Yahweh answered, and Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. And what's the vision? The, the prophecies that are written in, this, in these scriptures. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. We know that these prophecies will surely come. We know that time is on our side, okay? You know, and then you, when you read down, it gives you a description of the Edomites 
that are in rulership, man, and how wicked they are and how and how everything is going to fall upon their own head, man. You see that? I'll read a bit. I'll read a couple verses down. It says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, which represents his philosophies, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and could not be satisfied. All right? But gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. This is what Esau has done. Okay? He hasn't kept at home. He's been jumping into everyone's lands. That's why you have uh, uh, US, U.S. bases, military bases in all these different lands. Okay? But then they have the nerve to look at uh, Russia funny. You see, you Edomites are all about jumping and, and, and intruding into someone else's uh, land. Okay? Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and, and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his, how long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. And you can see that the, the proverb, right? This, this taunting proverb is being used against you now. Now the, the true history is coming out. Now people are speaking against so-called uh, white history, so-called Edomite history, okay? Not Ed so-called Edomites, uh, so-called white history, which is Edomite history. They're, they're speaking on the wickedness of Christopher Columbus, so on and so forth. Or if you go decades earlier, that they were, they were, um, they were proud about that, but now it's become shame. All right, so this is all biblical prophecy that is, is going to be accomplished one way or another. Okay, uh, and that's why those things had to happen. That's why Christopher Columbus had to come over here because that's all part of biblical prophecy. <clears throat> we get um, we get Romans nine. This is Romans nine. In verse 15, it says, For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that sheweth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, right? In other words, it's, it's, that who, it's about who the Heavenly Father chooses, for what purpose? For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I may shew my power in thee, and that my name might be glor might be declared throughout all the earth. And that's what happened. He showed his power by taking down Pharaoh, because Pharaoh was in power. So he showed his pow power by taking him down. And this is the same purpose that he raised up these Edomites. And, and uh, the, the, the Egyptian empire was a small empire, Okay. It's not even mentioned on the statue. It was a small empire, okay? The statue in Daniel it doesn't even mention the Egyptians. The Babylonian empire was greater than that. So were the Persians, so on and so forth. Now we're in the greatest empire, the, the largest empire, the most vast empire, which is the the um the um <clears throat> excuse me the the new revised Roman Empire, okay? See the seven heads and ten horns, which consists of NATO and the EU. This is the most vast. This this empire has control of the whole planet Earth, literally. Back then they had control of the Eastern Hemisphere. Now they have control of the whole planet Earth, which goes back to the blessing that Esau got. All right, but you have to understand the Lord is going to show His power by taking down such a great and vast kingdom. And this is going to be far greater than the deliverance of Egypt. Okay, hold on. This is Jeremiah 16 and verse 14, and it reads, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh liveth that brought up the children of, of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children 
of Israel from the land of the north, meaning North America, because guess what? The greatest deliverance is going to be out of North America, specifically Babylon the Great. That's going to be the greatest deliverance. That's where the greatest awakening is happening. Okay? That's where the majority of people know that their Israelites is in Babylon, because that's where the greatest destruction is going to be. You see that? So that's balance, right? The greatest destruction and the most people are going to die there. Hundreds of millions at one in one time in one hour, hundreds of millions are going to perish from America in one hour. Therefore, the, the deliverance is going to be the greatest. And from all the lands whither he hath driven them, and I will bring them again into the into their land. That I gave unto their fathers. Right. And there's also going to be brothers that's obviously going to be delivered out of different parts of the earth as well. Right. But like I said, the greatest deliverance is going to be in America, in Babylon the Great. You see? But the Heavenly Father raised up these devils to do what they're doing. You see? But even though the Heavenly Father raises you up to do something, when you go off, the Heavenly Father is going to take you out of power. All right. And the only ones who are never going to go off are the Israelites because we were built to rule under Yahweh Shai. We were built to rule under, under our Lord Yahweh Shai. Okay? You heathen are not fit to rule. No matter what heathen you put in place, it's always going to be disorder. It's always going to be uh, wickedness going on. Okay? You understand? And especially if you put the Edomites, which is the worst of the heathen, but even if you were to put these these two third Jakes in power now, it would be nothing but madness, all right? Because they don't have the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Let me get uh, Daniel's the fifth chapter real quick. This is Daniel's five and eighteen. It says, "O thou King, the Most High Power gave Nebuchadnezzar the father a kingdom, of thy father a kingdom, and majesty and glory and honor, and for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled." And feared before him, whom he he would have, and uh, whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. Right. So he had he had great power. You know, he had authority. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was depo deposed. From the, his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him, and he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, golly, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the most high power ruled in the kingdom of men. And that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will. You see that? You understand that? So the Lord took his father out of power and actually made him like a beast. He actually made him grow feathers, made him eat grass like an ox. He turned him, he had he gave him the mind of a beast for a time period because of his pride. How much more these Edomites, man, who is known in the scriptures as the thou most proud. Okay. You see that? that's why the kingdom is going to be translated this is ecclesiasticus 10 and 8 all right it says uh, because of unrighteous dealings injuries and riches got by deceit the kingdom is translated from one people to another and this is what the lord is setting up all right he's setting up for their substance to be put into the hands of the righteous right but they have to go to world war three that's all biblical prophecy and guess what? World War Three ties perfectly with what they're trying to do with this great, um, you know, R E S E T. You know, because it, it, it went. When, listen, when I, I watched this movie, this um, the movie, what was it? The um, the whistleblower, and it showed you all the the trafficking that was going that's going on in um in, in Bosnia, right? And um, they're trafficking them women. They're basically, they have them women like sex slaves, all right, tied up in rooms, chained up. And, they, and there's people of the UN and all that that's down with it, that's part of it, okay? 
but and they explained how that came about and they said it came about based upon the war that they had all right the war led to sex trafficking led to, to, to extreme poverty to, to, to famine and what happened the woman became property and that's gonna happen again that's gonna happen again man you see that's why I said that, that, that war the World War three fits perfectly into the plans of these elites but ultimately, most importantly, it fits perfectly into the hands of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. This is Jeremiah 15, 1. It says, The word of Yahweh, uh, the word that Yahweh spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard, publish and conceal not. Say, Babylon is taken, Bel is confounded, Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces. For out of the north there com cometh up a, a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. That, the see, so that didn't happen to ancient Babylon. That shows you that this is speaking about uh, the Babylon today, which is America. None is going to dwell therein. People are living in the ancient Babylon now. They shall remove, they shall depart both man and beast. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord. The, how are they going to depart through those missiles burning them up, man? In those days and in that time, saith Yahweh, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah, going and weeping. They shall go and seek the Lord their power. See, the 12, the 12 tribes are going to get back together to seek the Lord their power, mainly, specifically the elect. Okay, it's just speaking about specifically the elect. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come and let us join them ourselves to, to the Lord in a perpetual covenant uh, that shall not be forgotten. For my, my people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds uh, have caused them to err, uh, excuse me, has caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All that found them have devoured them. Their adversary said, We offend not because they have sinned against Yahweh, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their, of their fathers. Right? So, in other words, the nations knew that we were, when we sinned against our power, they can take us down. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he goat before the flocks for lo i will raise and cause to come up against babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country okay russia and their allies and they shall set at themselves in array against her from thence she shall be taken their arrow shall be as uh, of a mighty expert man none shall return in vain the arrows are speaking about the nuclear missiles Okay? None of them are going to miss. None of them are going to are gonna break or going to blow up in midair. No, they're all going to hit the target, which is Babylon the Great. All right? And Chaldea shall be spoiled, and, and all the spoil, and all that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord. You see that? So, so that's it. All right? So that's the bottom line dealing with the, um, I'm going to get some other scriptures though, but dealing with the, the nuclear destruction that showed you right there okay that nuclear destruction in that world war three is all part of the heavenly father's purpose man okay it says um this is isaiah 34 and 1 it says come come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people let the earth hear and all that is therein the world and all things that come forth of it for the indignation of the lord is upon all nations and his fury up, uh, his fury upon all their armies he hath utterly destroyed them he hath delivered them to the slaughter their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses and the mountain shall be the mountain shall be melted with their blood and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved with what with those nuclear missiles man okay and the reason those people are going to die is because it's going to be a, a, a great war which is world war three and the heavens shall roll together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth for off from the vine, and as a fallen fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. The nuclear missile is going to go up into the heavens. 
Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. You see that? You see that? So the Lord is, is setting up World War III for his judgment. See, Esau thinks he's going to use World War III to bring in... um. To bring in his books, oh, to bring in his purpose. Okay. But the Lord has his purpose. This is uh Joel 3 and 1. It says, For behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shapat, which means the Lord's judgment, Yahweh's judgment. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. You see that? So the Lord is going to gather them up for World War Three. For what? For his people. You see? So this is all the Lord's purpose. And these elites think they're doing their own thing, but no, the Lord, the Lord is is, is setting them up for the okie doke, and they're gonna go to war. Okay, even though the scriptures say what it says, they're gonna go to war because the Lord is gonna put that that evil thought in their mind. He's gonna put that in their mind. All right, and and they're not gonna be able to stop it. Right, whether they whether they say, oh now you know we don't want to do that because the biblical prophecy, it's still gonna happen. Because the Lord is going to put it in the, in the minds of those Russians. To, 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 he's putting it in the mind of the Russians now to get ready for war, man. You see? So there's nothing they can do. This is Ezekiel 38 and 1. It says, and the, and the, and the, and the scriptures, and, um, not the scriptures, there's a saying that says all wars are bankers' wars. Right? But this third world's war. They're going to be falling right into the uh, the checkmate of the Lord, man. This is Ezekiel 30 and 1. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and uh, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord, Power, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Which just represents the Russians, okay? Gog. When you look up Gog, right? That's the the landmass where um, the Russians are today, okay? And I will turn thee back and put hooks in that into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army horses and war, uh, horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. You see, the Lord is, is putting hooks in their jaws to bring them back into that old USSR spirit. So when they take over the Ukraine, they're taking it over to, to become part of them. They're not trying to completely just wipe it out. They're trying to make them um, become part of them again as it used to be in the USSR. That's what it means with he's going to put hooks in their jaws, man. And why are they doing that? Why are they bringing them together? To pre prepare for war, man. To be stronger, Okay. Even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya, with them, all of them with shield and helmet. That just represents the modern day uh, weaponry they have today, man. The guns, the the, the, the the bulletproof vests, you know, they still wear, wear helmets, okay? You got to bring it to modern day times. They didn't have guns back then. It's not going to say guns in the prophecy or automatic rifles. It's not going to say that, Okay? Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togomar, uh, of the of the north quarters. Uh, Gomer, I believe that's Turkey, all right? And all his bands and, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them, all right? So the Lord, so that's what the Russians are doing. They're guarding, they're being a guard unto these smaller countries, man. You see, like Persia dealing with Iran, right? The reason why America can't just go and run and and destroy Iran like the the, the Amalekites want them to, is because Russia is guarding it, man. If they do that, that's World War Three instantly, man. They understand that. You see, Joe Biden understands that World War III is going to be the end because he's like, oh, we can't go in and help the Ukrainians because that'll be World War III. They understand. He has enough sense to know that, okay? 
<clears throat> but um, I'm going to end it off with this, man. Because, like I said, it all ties into biblical prophecy. It all ties into biblical prophecy. This is um, Revelations 11, and verse 14. It says, the second woe is past. Woe represents the world wars, man. Okay? And behold, so the first world war came, the second world war came, right? So the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. The third world war is coming quickly, and there's nothing that Esau can do to stop it. So with that, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Kudash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to you, Akim, out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Shalom. All right, that's the spirit because you got this image back here and that's, uh, that's, uh, that looks like Petra, okay? Showing you that the, the, the Edomites were, were um, the Romans were Edomites. All right, with that, I'll say Shalom.